The corrupt officials at the city of Moultrie and the police department refused to answer emails or release records according to the Georgia Open Records laws. They are demanding in-person pickup of records to identify anyone obtaining public records. Of thousands of open records requests performed, Shields of Shame has never encountered this type of open records resistance before. Join us as we discover the corruption of a small town police department. basically saying, which I'll let you read it here in a second, that this is an internal City of Moultrie Police Department investigation. Anything that you say in this uh, investigation cannot be used in any criminal matter or criminal prosecution at all, only for internal use. So read that. And okay, this is a copy of the complaint. I want you to read it first, and this is your copy to keep. Okay. read that it's referencing this accident report here that you did. Do so you know what they're accusing you of doing? Yes, I do. What can you tell us about it? Um, this accident report, um, mm -hmm. the lady had a Hispanic license of Mexicans, and I've mm -hmm. never dealt with any kind of license like that before. So whenever I tried to run it, it wouldn't run anything. Mm -hmm. And I know that they do except some kind of Mexican licenses, but I've never dealt with it before. So I called and I asked her, do you have anybody that has a Georgia license that can come up here with you? Because I didn't want to take her to jail for not having a license because she did technically have a Mexican license, the international license, and then she had her Mexican passport. And I didn't know how to, because I can't run that license or whatever. And so I had her call somebody who did have a Georgia license to come up there so that I could use their information. Use their information for what? For the accident report, to put in the, to give the, like the warning or whatever, because policy says that if there's an accident we have to issue a, some kind of citation or warning. Okay, it was, uh, yeah, Nancy Marie, I can't pronounce that last name, but not Hera. Was that the person that was driving? No, that's who brought her license up there. But you got that person listed as driver one. Well, because I didn't, like I said, I didn't know how to use the Mexican license to put it in here because it's completely different than the, the Georgia license. Okay, so who was driving the vehicle? Um... I can't think of her name. Martha DeMars. Okay, is her name listed on the accident report? No. Why not? Because whenever I... I didn't know how to use her information to put it in here because it was the Mexican license. Okay, do you realize that you have the wrong person listed as the driver on that accident report? Yes. 
Yes. You understand that's not true. That's mm -hmm. um, that that's not an accurate record of that mm -hmm. accident. Yes. Do you understand that that deals um, with a falsifying report by mm -hmm. putting the wrong name? Well, at the time I was really confused. I didn't because she was handing me the that license, mm -hmm. and I'd never seen it before. Did you call another officer, or your supervisor, to try to find out what to do since you had dealt with that no, before? No, I did not. I Why not? Everybody was busy, and I just was trying in a hurry, trying to hurry up and get it done. Okay, and uh, you wrote a warning for improper lane change, mm -hmm. but that person there was not driving that vehicle? No. <clears throat> well, how could they be improper lane changing when they weren't driving the vehicle? I mean, how do you explain yeah. that? I get what you're saying. I, at the time, I was just totally confused on what to do, and I've never seen a license like that. And I didn't want to take her to jail for not having a license because she did have a license, an international license, because I've dealt with just the plain Mexican license. But she actually had her Mexican license and then her passport and then the international license. But whenever I tried to run it, it wouldn't run. You know, it didn't recognize it because it's from a completely different country. And so I just didn't know how to do it. Okay, but you do understand that putting the wrong name on the report is not accurate and basically falsifying yeah, the report. I, I, yeah, right. Okay, well that's what the complaint is mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions, Roger? Um, you said you, everybody was busy. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand it. I didn't yeah. know what to do. Mm -mm. And that's why you didn't call your supervisor? Yeah. You never thought that you put somebody else down that it wasn't the driver? Honestly, I didn't think about that at the time. Um, you know, I explained it to the other people, and it was just like a, a scuff mark on it. And I guess to me, I didn't think that it was that big of an accident. And that's why I just gave them a warning. I don't know. I just... I really didn't think about the falsifying the document. I was just trying to cover my butt on issuing the warning, the citation or whatever. But I didn't know how to do it with the Mexican license. If that makes any sense. Okay. So you saying you did intentionally put Nancy's name in the report mm -hmm. on the written warning. Yeah, I, yeah. Knowing that she wasn't mm -hmm. the driver of that yeah. vehicle. Do you know that that is considered very serious? I know. Well, I know. Now that you're sitting here, yeah. Like I understand. Like I completely understand that that was very wrong but at the time I was just kind of my head was kind of going crazy because I had never dealt with this kind of situation before and I was trying to cover my butt on this part and wasn't even completely thinking about this part. Is there anything else you could think of that you hadn't told us we hadn't discussed in here no. as in rela no. relationship to this? No, I mean that's it. I, I mean like I, I know that she wasn't the driver. And then, I don't know, in my head I guess I was, it wasn't that big of an accident. Like nobody got hurt, nobody was injured. It, I mean, there wasn't really even a lot of damage to the vehicle. It was just like a scuff mark. And I guess I thought that I was trying to cover my butt. But I didn't think about the, the whole falsifying the report. That 
that never crossed my mind at that point. Okay, we're going to ask you to write us, a, give us a written statement. Okay. That's what you told us here today. This is an open investigation, mm -hmm. ongoing investigation. Yeah. I ask that you do not say anything to anyone or as it relates to this investigation in okay. any way. I have any conversation about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you got some papers you can write on your mm -hmm. file. No. Uh, how do I write it to you, or I just on um, this day just I'm just date it and then tell when, what happened in your words and sign it. in regards to this complaint and this accident report. Okay, then I'll sign it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay, Officer Lena, like Lieutenant Miller said earlier, this is an ongoing investigation mm -hmm. and uh, what I'm going to have to do at this time is place you on administrative leave with pay. Mm -hmm. The chief will not be back until Thursday. Okay. So there probably won't be no decision or anything made until he gets back. But, okay. uh, but in the meantime, you're to turn in. I'll let Lieutenant Walters know that you're going to do this. Your uh, duty weapons, your ID card and all the keys that you have and any other issued equipment that he will box okay. up and put in a box until okay. a decision is made. Okay. I need you to do that today. And I need you Bring to... Bring my stuff up here today? Right. Okay. I need you just to initial down there that you receive there. Just sign at the bottom. I'm going to give you a copy of it. Get your equipment and get it to Lieutenant Walters just as soon as you can. And like I said, the chief. What all is it then? Well, basically all of your equipment. Your okay. uh, weapons, keys, ID, gun belt, okay. uh, uniforms, everything that will be okay. boxed up. Okay. I'm going to let Lieutenant Walters take a box of that picture and aim on it. Okay, do I, I need to go let him know that now? No, I'm going to let him know. You just. Get, go ahead and get your equipment and bring it up. And, uh, you know, no one outside this room now is being told anything. Okay. So, you know, if, if you do that, it'll be you. Mm -hmm. You know, not any, yeah. not okay. letting anyone know anything. Okay. Okay? All right. And I'll know something Thursday? Or Chief will be back Thursday and he'll be given a copy of the investigation notes mm -hmm. and everything. and. I'm sure he will be getting in contact with you. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. It is two forty-seven. All right, Nancy. All right. Um, today's date is. Uh, February, Thursday, February the 6th, it's uh, approximately 20.06, which is 8.06 p.m. Mm -hmm. We're at the Moultrie Police Department in the Chief Conference Room. I am Lieutenant Rob Rodriguez, and you are? Nancy Najera. How old are you, Nancy? 28. Okay, are you under any alcohol or drugs at this time? Negative. Okay. Well, you know why we're here. Yes. Uh, can you uh, just tell me about a little bit about that to start with? Own. Um, let's see. January the 24th, I received a call from my father-in-law around 1,500 hours. Needed me, asked me what I was doing. I told him that I was working. He said, well, I need you to come. I've just been in an accident. And him and my stepmother, or my stepmother-in-law, mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. I went to the accident, and it was right here behind Burroughs. 
off mm -hmm. of first. And I got there. When I got there, Officer Luna was there and my father-in-law and mother-in-law was there. Mm. I get out of the car. I ask them what happened, and they said they had him in an accident. And at that time, the second, the other folks that was driving the other car was just them leaving. I asked Officer Luna what happened, and she said that she wasn't going to give them a citation. That she was just going to let it go ahead and let them go. And I asked her why. She said, "Well, because they, my mother-in-law had the international license and the what was it, the passport, but that wasn't valid." And I knew that being from 911. So I asked her, I said, well, are you going to citate her? And she said, no. She, what she was going to do was run the vehicle information and whoever the car came back registered to, she was going to put the mm -hmm. information in that person's name. So I said, all right, fine. I said, do you need me anymore? She said, no, you're fine. You're set to go. And I was like, all right. So then I told my in-laws what was going on and I left. I didn't even get around the corner. I got a call from my father-in-law I answered the phone and it was Officer Luna. She said that there was a problem. I asked her what the problem was and she said that she couldn't put the information into the person's name as she originally wanted it because it was in the male's name and she was a female driver. So I was like, alright. She said, the only thing I can do is just get your information to put you in the report. I was like, alright. So then I give her my driver's license number, assuming she didn't come out. I mean, she said that she's putting everything in my name in the report and it didn't dawn on me then that it was going to be my name as a driver. So now my phone's blown up by the insurance company and by the second drivers. They're calling me wanting to know how the accident happened, what all happened, whose fault it was, and get my side of the story, but I wasn't the driver. So, mm -hmm. And I don't know why she didn't just go ahead and citate them. I mean, yes, that's why I didn't get them onto law enforcement because I know so many people and you can't just sit there and choose some that you're going to citate and choose some that you're not. I mean, the citation would have been easier to go ahead and citate her and take her to jail or do whatever, but that's not what happened. So, this report that I have here, this incident report, what you're, I'm going to let you look at it. It's an accident report dated mm -hmm. the 24th of January. What you're saying to me is that on, on that date and time, you were not the driver of that vehicle no, sir. and you didn't have that cl uh, crash. At no, sir. Okay. So, Matter of fact, the policy number on here is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, my driver's license number is on here, but the policy number is not even right. The vehicle is registered to my nephew, and the insurance is in my mother-in-law's name, which was the one driving the car the day of the crash. All right. This is a, I'm going to show you is a copy of a citation, a warning citation that was issued to. How do you pronounce your last name? Nahira. Okay, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> but it says that it's addressed to Nancy Marie. Is that your middle name? Yes. It's, it says it's addressed to you um, with a birthday. Is that your birthday? Yes. Okay. Uh, is that your signature there at the bottom? Negative. So you didn't issue the side. You aren't issued that that warning citation for improper. For one, my name is not spelled with an S at the end, it's with a C. So yeah. that's not my signature. Nope. Okay. I don't even I didn't even know if I didn't even get a copy of that citation. Okay. Now, why did uh, do you, let me back up. Did Officer Luna ask you specifically or tell you specifically that she was uh, she didn't you know, she didn't want to take your mother in law to jail or she did want to take your mother I mean how, how did she didn't approach and come out and say, well, let's just let you do everything so she didn't couldn't trouble. I did ask her why she wasn't going to citate or give her any kind of citation or anything whenever she got all of her 27s and 28s off the vehicle. Yeah. And she said that she wasn't, that she was just going to go ahead and cut her big break and that she was going to run the 28 on the car and whoever came out registered to it, she was going to put the information in there, everything in their name. So then I didn't say anything else. I just went ahead and told my in-laws what was going on, which they know Spanish. And I was talking to Luna in English, but then I went back and I explained everything to them and told them what was going on. When I left, she didn't call me and say, well, hey, I'm just going to do all this and put all of it in your name. She said, um, just give me your 27 number. And she ran it, and then it was wrong. So I hung up the phone. She ran everything, and it wasn't coming back right. So then she got me to give her my 27s again. I gave it to her, and she verified everything on there. And I told her, yeah, that was my information. And then she never went back and said, well, it's going in your name, nothing. It's just, here's the information. Well, I'm going to ask you some hard questions now. But, you know, you've been, like you said, you were a dispatcher. You, 
you you have an idea of what goes on. Is there any reason why you would have thought that? I mean, you the light bulb didn't go off that that she's asking you for your driver's license. It did at the moment, and then when I got to think about it and got back to the office, I said it's probably going to be in my name. Because if she's not going to ask for it, just to ask for it, who randomly shows up on an accident or on 1050 and just gives their information? Mm -hmm. Which she didn't ask for it on the scene. She called me back off of my father-in-law's number. So and she used his phone. Yes, to call it, she did call me from her phone. It was off of my father-in-law's phone. Mm -hmm. So um, at any it, it so at no point did she say, "Hey, I'm going to put this in your name," so that I don't recall her telling me that she was. Okay. Um, and then, and you said after this, what has happened? After this, I've been getting calls from the owner of that vehicle because I'm assuming that the guy, the lady that was driving the car that day was a black female. The guy that's been calling me is a black male. The vehicle is registered to a black male. He has been calling me, wanting the correct policy number, wanting to know what all happened, wanting to know if I was going to talk to the insurance company. and. I don't know anything, and there, I mean, my insurance agency's done called me and wanted to know why I haven't talked to him, and she doesn't know what's going on, but now she's told me that, because where I have my insurance at, my mother-in-law has her insurance at, and the guy that's registered, the car's registered to, and my nephew has his insurance at, we're often going to get dropped, because we all have policy, and we're not registered or certified users to drive under the policy that they're fencing, they just cancel all of it, so now I'm in a big old mind. So basically, because when did you, when did, well let me ask you, when did you realize that you were, that this this false report had been done? Was mine, whenever I called up here and asked Kathy for the report, I got her to fax it to me. And when she faxed it to me, that's whenever my information was in the driver's information. And the policy went right, and that's when I realized it is in my name. Mm -hmm. So... At that that point, was last, was it this week or last week? It was Friday of last week, the 31st. Mm -hmm. And then how did you get to Freddie? I called Freddie this morning because my insurance called me this morning asking me, and my insurance agent, not the people up in Atlanta, called me wanting to know everything. So I called Freddie. I was like, I don't know who to call. So I started to call up here, and I was going to try to, I did call back up here to talk to Kathy because I can't, I thought I scanned the report to my desktop at work, and I didn't. So I'd call and get another report, and whenever I was talking to Kathy, I asked her if Freddie was working. Because I know Freddie, and I said, well, I could talk to him and ask him about it. Told her to see if he could come up here and she told me to So I had to call dispatch. Called dispatch and told them that if he went 10-8 or if he was available to send him, that I needed to talk to him. He got there to the office. I closed the door, closed my windows and everything. Showed him a report, told him what happened, and he told me he was going to talk to you and said what y'all could do. And I hated it because I don't want her to get in trouble. Yes, I've done a lot to help a lot of the Hispanics out in the field or whatever, and that's a whole nother situation and topic about being here illegal and not being illegal. But yeah, if you're driving, you have no license, you're going to get citated. My husband just got citation, and we just went to court, and he had to pay $500 for not having a license. She can too. Well, I can tell you what's going to have to happen. Obviously, the report has to be corrected. Mm -hmm. The... So your mother-in-law is going to have to come down to the station. She's going to have, have to bring, of course, all her information mm -hmm. um, so she can be issued the proper citations okay. and all that. All, all that stuff is going to have to happen mm -hmm. at some point. Um, for the, then the report has to be corrected. I don't know if that's going to help you at all with your, um, with your insurance company or your insurance. That's what I'm, that's the whole thing is for this to get out of my name and for it not to go over my but, uh, you know, DMV. Yeah, I mean, well, nothing's going to go on your, on your, um, the state motor vehicle record because you aren't issued a citation. Mm -hmm. But your insurance company, um, you know, they, most insurance companies, they have like their own in-house. If you get to, they keep their own record for every accident you have then they keep mm -hmm. up with that so that'll be up to to um to them so i still run the risk of having it put on my well no your insurance there? company could still say that i mean uh, you know your insurance company could still say well uh, why did y'all you know they may look at it as it's a like it was an intentional plan a, a conspiracy so to speak mm -hmm. 
and they still may say, well, we, we don't want you as a client because mm -hmm. you, you tried to get us, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but that's nothing that we, I mean, we got to correct the report because you, you weren't the right driver, we need to put the right driver. Those things need to be corrected and we'll, and that will be handled. But, mm -hmm. but um, uh, as far as whether or not Officer Looney gets in trouble, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, what will have to happen is we'll need to figure out if there's any policy violations and, you know, and, and that's just nothing that you need to be concerned with. But we just need to get what took place, get it documented. That's why we're videoing it. I'm going to ask you to, to, to write it out just like we discussed mm -hmm. um, and then we'll uh, and then we'll go from there okay okay right. um, I will ask you and I'll, uh, until until this investigation is over please don't discuss it with anybody because it'll take the fruits of the investigation it's approximately 2018 um, that will conclude the um, video portion of the interview um, then we're going to uh, I'll have you um, do a written statement. Okay. All right? All right. All right. Can you speak any English at all? Can we get a translator? Okay. Okay, uh, let me explain what we have. Uh, we have a female here who speaks only Spanish, and she was involved in an auto accident on uh, January, 24th. January 24th at about 3.22 p.m. in the afternoon here in Moultrie, Georgia. And I need to know basically from her what all happened from the time she had the accident to the officer got there to the time she left. And I'm going to put you on speakerphone now. Okay. Can you hear me okay? So what happened is I looked here again in the corner when I was turning, but I see that when I was, uh, when I, when I was turning, I got too close and I, I got a scratch. Not too much. It was just a scratch in the pain. It mm -hmm. was not much. And then because this lady stopped, I also stopped. Okay. Can you ask her now what the police officer did when the police officer got there and what the police officer told her and told her to do? And the officer. Sorry, the officer just asked me to pull up there, just to move up there. Then after that, we got to Nancy. I don't speak English, and that was it. Okay, uh, the police officer, her last name is Luna, L-U-N-A. She speaks Spanish, so I, I need to know that they converse in Spanish. And does she know the police officer? She's a fairly young female with black hair. Well, so the officer was a young female, and yes, she spoke Spanish, and that was it. They just, I know she spoke Spanish. They were there, they got a ticket, and I don't know, nothing else. Uh, what did the police officer tell her to do? So now I think the officer just gave me a yellow, the yellow paper. The officer said, this is not a problem. And I just worried because of my level, that was it. Okay. The uh, police officer knew that she was driving the vehicle, but the police officer put someone else in as the driver instead of her. Does she know anything about that? Sir, I don't know because Nancy was helping on the interpreter, and so I don't know. He asked for Nancy's driver license, but I don't know. Okay, uh, ask her who the car belonged to that she was driving. Now that is my vehicle, but do you know that when you want to buy a vehicle, they ask you for a driver license, so I ask my grandson to get the vehicle for me, but it's my vehicle. Okay, what's the last name of the owner of the vehicle? Grandson. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, what relation are they together? Okay, so she was driving his car, correct? With permission? Si. Yes. Okay. Does she know for a fact that he has insurance on that vehicle? No, sir. I have the insurance under my name. She has the insurance under her name? Yes. Okay. okay. Could you please ask her if she has anything else to add that she wants us to know about this accident? No, sir. I just will let you know what is the amount that I'm going to have to pay because I didn't have a driver's license. Well, she hasn't been charged with anything yet. Uh, the investigation is still ongoing, so I can't say she, until she's charged, we don't know. Okay, well, what will happen now, if you could explain it to her, is we're going to continue our investigation. If we need her back, we will get in contact with her. She will hear from us. Otherwise, she won't have to do anything if she doesn't hear back from us. Okay, thank you, operator. And what I'm going to do now is make a copy of her driver's license and give it back to her, and then she will be free to go. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to U.S. citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico and New York have repealed qualified immunity and we remain hopeful that in the near future serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.